Good morning, guys. It is nine o'clock Saturday morning. Let's get it started with a little weather report. It does not look so hot for today. It is gonna be raining pretty much all day long. Uh, hasn't started yet, but that's why I figured let's start this early. Uh, we got a lot to do today, so let us get this started. So, we are gonna be working on another truck today. It's not my own. This is not my truck, and what we are gonna be doing today is a little bit of work uh, for this nice gentleman here. Uh, but we'll give you guys a little bit of walk around of it. Uh, 06 four-door long bed, as you can see. It's got some really nice fuel forged uh, 22 by 12 wheels on there with some Toyo uh, ST proxies. He's got a fast 150 hanging underneath here. He's got a beans diesel sump. She is a handshaker, boy. She is a handshaker. He's got a big old, big old chimney stack in the bed of this thing too. I was trying to find something to cover with it last night, and a bucket isn't even big enough, so I had to get a uh, one of my clean drain pans. <laughs> but big old chimney pipe in there. But that's it for the outside. Who cares about the outside? It's all what's underneath the hood. So let's see what we have thus far. He's got a 366 hiding underneath there. Nice intake, uh, industrial injection, dual fuelers. Uh, I believe they're 180 horsepower, about 90% over uh, industrial injection injectors. Uh, he's already got head studs in this thing. And a couple other things. He's got a really nice Mishimoto uh, intercooler, some intercooler piping. Couple other things here and there, but what we are going to be doing today is push rods and valve springs uh, because he is going to be going to a larger air setup. So, just to keep the uh, you know valves and uh, everything in check in the valve train, we're going to be installing Hamilton valve springs and Manton uh, extreme duty push rods, kind of like what's in a lot of the trucks that you see come through here. So, that is the project goal for today. Big old, big old light bar. But let's get this thing inside before it downpours and then everybody gets wet. It is officially time to wake up the neighborhood. Here are the goods, valve springs, push tubes. Got the old girl inside the shop here for the rain. Got our sweet light because that thing is just an absolute, absolute lifesaver. So I just wanna talk about his setup real quick here uh, because I feel like it's it's pretty applicable to a lot of people who are watching here. So, so basically 5.9 truck, EFI Live, 366, uh, with a decent set of injectors and he's got dual pumps, but you could also do it with uh, a single pump as well So that 366 369 turbo uh, in the factory location uh, is a great option This truck uh, has already been on the dyno. He made about 680 actually I think it was 680 so 680 to the wheels out of a 366 with some really good EFI live tuning very capable truck very probably very fun street truck to drive uh, 700 very quick spooling. Uh, his injectors are pretty big. Um, luckily, he does have it waste gated. So it's waste gated at like 45 pounds, which uh, with the amount of fuel he has probably would go way above that. So um, very good idea to have that waste gated. But if you even had a smaller set of injectors uh, and, and a smaller pump setup, um, you could still hit about 
700 horse on these, especially that new 369. That would probably be, I think people are going over 700 at, at that point with that 369. So if you're looking for, uh, you know, not to get crazy with an S400 or a second gen swap and, and really just try to do it um, a little bit more on the mild side, th this is like a pretty go-to setup. Now, if it was a 6.7 truck, it would be a little bit different seeing that they can spool uh, larger chargers a little bit easier. These 5.9s take a little bit smaller charger to kind of get that really quick response drivability because of the motor characteristics, but that 366, 369 option for these 5.9s is, is a big thumbs up in my opinion. So if you're looking to be around that 700-ish mark with you know maybe just some small injectors and, and, and just a single pump and, and keep it relatively uh, uh, simple and cheap or cheaper I guess you would say uh, you know that's a great option so that's all I want to say about that next thing before we dive in here I know I know I feel like some people they listen to me talk and all they see is rambling and sometimes I admit I do ramble a little bit but this is this channel this station my channel it is not a complete tech channel. We don't do installs every single day. I mean, I, I, it's just me and my garage and my buddies. You know, I don't have, it. I try to do my best to get new parts and, and new products in here, guys, and, and, and working on a variety of different trucks, but I'm by no means a big company doing install videos every, every day. This is basically my life every day. So, granted, some days of life are not as uh, cool, fun, and exciting, and sometimes it's a little bit more talking, um, but this is really just, you know, the, the subscriber base and, and the fans, and I appreciate every single one of you, but this isn't always, you know, performance diesel tech install videos, and I feel like some people kind of need to, need to understand that a little bit, and to, you know, if I want to film, you know, me and the wife going somewhere completely it, if I want to put it on here it's gonna be on here because it's my life you know so anyway let's dive into this truck of course no install would be complete without our buddy our main man top side might have a little height adjustment here good thing this thing this thing's got height adjustments for taller trucks so we're gonna have to bump this up one notch here be good to go. Oh, I'm not going to be going over every little single step by step. I know a lot of you guys have seen some of my older videos. So what we're going to end up doing first is removing this valve cover, the intake horn, um, and some of the wiring, and then getting to underneath here, and then I'll go over from there. But uh, for time's sake purposes, we're going to fast forward through some of the easy stuff that I'm sure you guys know how to do. So valve cover six bolts, intake horn four bolts. Um, take those off first and we'll go from there. guys so here's pretty much where we are at now uh, all the valve covers off all the wiring out of the way uh, I have all of the uh, rocker uh, bolts loose uh, to let the oil drain because oil does uh, accumulate in these little rockers here uh, if you crack the bolt some of it does actually drain out before you go ahead and pull them off so we're gonna pull those out get those numbered in order um, and then also start pulling off the injector line so on these five nines these do have injector hold downs and you can kind of see on, which one was it, right here. You can see that that's broke. So these injector hold downs are important um, and they do prevent the lines from cracking when they start you know, harmonically, mathematically, magically vibrating. So um, you definitely want to make sure you have all your hold downs secure and tight. So we're going to go over that um, and then when this gentleman comes and picks up his truck. I'm gonna just let him know that definitely needs to get a new hold down for, uh, I believe it's number four over there. And I think number six is just not on there, but I think I can get it on and secured. Uh, but that number four one is actually broke. So 
We're gonna do that, get the lines off, get the rockers uh, off, and then uh, go from there. Then from there, uh, you're gonna bust these uh, 15 16 uh, injector tube nuts off, pull those out, then the injectors can pretty much come out, and we are well on our way, guys. All right, so here is everything laid out, labeled, injectors are out. We are now pretty much ready to get the uh, pistons rolled over to their highest point, and then we can uh, start compressing the valve springs and changing the valve springs out. The uh, push tubes are currently out as well, all the injector lines, as you saw. So this is pretty much where you need to be. Uh, everything pretty much minus head studs to get to the valve springs. So it is quite a bit of a process. All right guys, so just to give you a visual on this old motor, cause it is kind of similar. So here's your cam right here and basically what it ends up looking like. And you've probably seen a camshaft before you have your lobes on your camshaft. If it would ever focus, there we go. It's a little rusty. This is the broken piece out of the race truck. But if you look at the cam, and from there, basically your tappet rides on that. And then as your cam rolls around, it kind of lifts up and down with the lobe of the cam. Everyone's probably somewhat familiar with that. So where your push tubes come in is, let me grab a stock one here. Basically from your tappet, your push rod sits in this little, little thing right here and then goes up and that's what attaches to the end of your rocker assembly. So just to give you a brief valve train explanation, you know, your rockers from your push tubes then go down to your tappet. So our aftermarket ones, here's the side-by-side -side comparison of the aftermarket one, the Manton Extreme Duty push rods. I'm gonna sit right in there like that. Just be overall better, stronger, bigger, more geared towards performance. But like I mentioned, we're gonna then roll the engine over, get one of the pistons, usually number one or whatever one's closest um, to the uh, top of the cylinder bore, and then I can put my compressor tool in and compress those valves down. So that's the next step. So the tool with the stud, it's actually a two-piece tool, uh, screws into the injector holes here, and then has this stud that basically sticks up. And then this plate kind of slides over top of it, and you spin this on and tighten this, and then that actually compresses and you can actually hear, I was going to say there's a noise you can hear when the uh, when they pop, just like that, like that, and then you screw it down and basically the top of the valves rest against the pistons inside there and then when you screw this down it compresses the valves and then what you can see here is, and then you need a little, little magnet guy, put that right there, so then you can then take the uh, retainers Am I saying that right? Keepers. Keepers. I said on my last video too that I always get them mixed up, which I still do. Okay, and once all of the, what'd you say, Ryan? Keepers? Mm-hmm. Once all the keepers are off. I don't like that with your wrench. Yeah. You can then loosen this. Okay, so once that is released all the tension, Springs will pretty much come all the way up, and then you can just take the uh, retainers off the top of the spring. Take these out. You're good to go. Then all you got to do is just reverse the process, put the new springs in. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to line that up with the uh, stem of the valve put this back on here and this does have an intake and exhaust side screw this back down tighten them back up and then put your um, retainers keepers keepers golly uh, back in the grooves and that's the most important part you really want to make sure that they're seated correctly and that when you relieve the tension that everything is seated properly because that would end up being a very very bad day so that's pretty much it. That is valve springs. I mean, to install new push tubes or push rods, 
Uh, all you got to do is stick them in and make sure they uh, seat in the uh, tap correctly and get them on the end of the rocker assembly correctly. And that's pretty much it. Reassembly. Alrighty guys, quite a bit later uh, and we do have the valve springs completely wrapped up. After the valve springs are all pretty much done, then we can start assembling, putting the uh, injectors back in, getting those torqued to spec, getting the uh, crossover tubes back in, torqued to spec. Uh, the complete sequence I've kind of gone over. It's pretty easy to look up online. Basically have to seat the injector, seat the tube, final torque each one uh, in a specific order, specific torque. That's definitely very important when putting this stuff back together. Pretty much cleanliness from here on out. We're just going to keep everything super clean. So all of the crossover tubes are now torqued and also the injectors are now completely torqued down and in proper sequence. Now, the number six injection line was missing its uh, lifting hoist uh, plate here. It must have been taken off the last time this truck was apart. And that's the reason why number six was injection line was not, the hold down was not tight. So I actually happen to have, this is the bolt that holds that down with a little stud to then hold the number six injection line. So I'm going to put that in first and then we're going to put the injector lines on and that should be that. Common rails are self bleeding so there is no cracking of any lines. They just happen to crank a little bit and then they should fire right up. So we are getting very very close. The rockers will go back on. We'll put the uh, push tubes in and that'll be that. The other thing I forgot to mention is the back two cylinders number five and six. If you are wondering how they actually come apart is up on the firewall here. You can see there's little cutouts. There's one here, and then there's one back there. That push rods go up into the cowl, and that's how they come out. And then you just gotta put the uh, little rubber garments back on. So, here we go. All right, go ahead, crank her over. guys we are all set truck is done ready to be returned to the owner uh, right before the rain hits it is getting ready to downpour any second now but really wanted to focus on getting the truck back together um, and focusing on this scene that's not my own stuff that I you know uh, can't really mess up so uh, I needed to focus on that so if you are interested in getting like a step-by-step uh, I'm going to put a video right up here. That is a video that I did uh, installing my own injectors on my own truck. I went over like pretty much every, every single step. Um, but other than that, this truck is done, ready to go. Uh, redid the valve adjustment. That was way out. Uh, so got that taken care of. Cleaned up the engine bay a little bit. Uh, fixed some wires uh, that were really close to the uh, steering shaft down there. A um, couple of little things. But everything is good. Test drove good. Didn't really get on it. It's not my truck. That's not my really, you know. All I did was uh, valve springs and push rods. I don't really need to test, uh, you know, the engine running to do that. So, uh, but drove good, good to go. Really like these wheels though. Not really a big fan of the uh, machined black, but these wheels are really, really nice. But that is a wrap on this truck. Well, shut there. And here comes the rain, guys. Here it comes. Alrighty, guys. That is pretty much going to wrap up this install video. 
Uh, we have tons of parts ordered for uh, the first gen that are coming in, so hopefully very, very soon. I am hoping, hoping, hoping to get the head back tomorrow. It's actually been done. Uh, it's just I haven't had time to go get it uh, because it's way up north. So um, I think we found another Dana 80 rear uh, because the other one fell through. So thank you guys for who everybody who reached out to me about that. Um, so hopefully we're getting a rear soon. Hopefully the trains will be done soon. So we're going to get back on the first gen project very, very, very shortly. So more parts to come. Um, we're kind of just in a little bit of a lull here. I mean, it's just, you know, waiting on parts, blowing trucks up. Uh, everything in between so we're trying to uh, keep the schedule as much action-packed as possible but that is not always possible seven days a week you know it's not an easy thing so uh, keep that in mind but we are doing our best I am doing my best thank you guys so much for watching hit that like button before you leave subscribe if you have not already plenty plenty of diesel action yet to come plenty more racing to come uh, we got a lot of things planned so stay tuned thank you guys I'll see you tomorrow see ya. Oh, 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 oh,